This has got to be the longest that we've ever gone without unlocking the entirety of a new map. But with the lack of new species, there's just not been as much incentive to get out here on the New England Mountains map. And of course, we did fully unlock it in Early Access. And now it's just a matter of going back and doing it again. So that is going to be the plan for today. We are headed down across the south part of the map to get the outpost and lookout points. And I just have a feeling there's got to be one between where we are and this lookout point. So hopefully we can stumble into it. But worst case, the lookout point will tell us. And evidently, picking up right where we left off last time. Although with far more raccoons than we ever saw in one spot. There was a boar out there. So I guess we'll try to get him with the 243 handgun. They kind of all outrun for a lot longer than I thought, but that's going to get him down. And I would love to get the opportunity at a level 5 raccoon out here, but we still only have the two diamonds. And they've got some pretty cool trophy lodge poses, so that would be a neat thing to be able to get. And we've now shot quite a number of decent ones outside of early access stuff. They've probably been our best trophies on New England that haven't been a diamond yet, but... A gold to start with, 9.99 kilo by the way, 10 plus score, and that's a good way to get us going. I still don't see any indication of a lodge down in here, so I guess we'll just keep heading down that way and see what else it leads us to. So then now it's time to unveil our kind of big game weapon for today, and that is the slightly customized 270 Warden. That was horrible. Are there two? There are two. They're not that big, but that was insanely loud. Anyway, I wanted to do something with it, and I really wish we had more, like, photorealistic camouflage options for our customizing of guns. So I went with this, did a little bit of the orange camo, and actually the barrel has the brown paint, which I don't mind with the camo stock. I think that kind of works. What I don't think works as good is using the 270 on Moose. We really got to try to make a heart shot here. And even still... It's not like we'd be able to drop it, but it would be nice to at least not have to track that much. Gonna try to go kind of in through the leg, and I, it looks like that didn't work. I wanted to alert him and get him to turn, but he just wasn't having that. It is, though, despite that, a lung shot, and we'll pay close attention to the tracking distance when we actually go and find him. Just to, I guess, look at the difference between what we ideally want to do and more or less taking them down instantly or whatever this ends up being probably six seven hundred meter plus of tracking got all kinds of stuff coming through here there's red foxes coyotes the moose are coming back i don't know if any of them are halfway decent i wanted to maybe get the fox but he wasn't that big the coyotes aren't that big i mean it's gonna be a tough shot to begin with the moose are coming back this way now what is going on here why is Apparently they can't get out of here. We hit the fox, so it's going to take him down. And maybe we just get those and go. I did realize, as we're trying to dodge everything here, that six or 700 meters was a bad guess. Because moves run so much more slowly now. So it really only was a couple hundred meters. That's a, a devil fox there, 6.66. Figures for the chaos here. And a tracking distance of actually only 300 meters. Which all things considered, a kind of underpowered caliber for a moose. That's not a bad deal. I cannot believe what we're looking at. A melanistic whitetail buck out here on the New England mountains. Are you serious? The most obscure little lake. I almost walked away. Because we came up from this side. There's a raccoon drink zone. And nothing. Nothing anywhere. And if it wasn't for that little tiny level one. I'd have never known. And now we gotta try to get that with the 270. We'll probably scoot in a little bit closer just to be safe. And it just dawned on me. I've not seen it anywhere yet. The new model as a melanistic. We're about to get a real close look. That's just stunning over there. And the fact that he's kind of standing in the sunlight too. There would be no feasible way of calling him in. With the water the way it is, he'd probably just kind of mill around over there with the rest of the deer. And I don't think we can sneak over there and get screenshots either. So I suppose here at about 80 meters, we'll try to get him. 
We were unable to hard shot the moose, but maybe we can hard shot the buck. Look at that. Just taking a moment to appreciate what is something we're not likely to see for a while, but this time, we'll slot that shot in there. That is so cool. I wish you would have died a little bit differently so we could take a better screenshot of him laying there. That was cool. I didn't know the magazine was customized in that. I didn't mind the orange camo with the 270 ward in that. Kind of worked. But much, much cooler is this guy. He may be bigger than our other Mela. I almost want to say it's 212. And this guy's got a little bit more width to that frame, I think. There's really not a great angle. I mean, that... You get to see how nice the melanistic coat is. We'll get one with Sir 12 in there, too. And let's see. What is this guy? 224. Maybe our other one was like 222. Regardless, I think it's bigger. It's even, amazingly. Because a lot of times you get those rare racks being uneven. Look at that guy. Let's, uh... I think if we tax it, we can't go into the inspect screen, actually. I'll check that to be sure. But we'll get a couple of screenshots in here. That's just amazing. And... Again, to get it with the new models. Because that's always been the thing. We've got our couple of super rares from the original Great One grind. And while the new models updating in the lodge and them looking like the current ones is nice, there is that aspect of like, they kind of look different when we shot them. So the nice thing here is, it's got the updated model and we get to see it. And it really looks good. We'll go ahead and tax them now. I want to confirm that. Are we still able to go to inspect? We are. Okay, I thought that wasn't possible. I think it's impossible to back out, actually. What a crazy trophy. Got to be an initial spawn. I mean, we've not been down here. Man, I mean, two out of three times that we've been out here, we had the diamond cottontail. There was the piebald green wing teal in that hunt. Then we had hunt with nothing. And now a mellow white tail buck and a good one at that. And at least... Kind of keeping things moving here with a somewhat decent moose. I think it could be difficult because... I mean, we can either accept that we're going to have to get a lung shot and just track it again. Or struggle to alert him running through deep water. I guess we'll just go for the lung shot. I thought the angle wasn't that great, but right in the crease ought to work. And ideally, if it's anything like the last one, a 300-ish meter track won't be that bad. It's really not that bad. I mean, we have the insight and the comparison of doing the moose grind and even say like with the 300, a poor shot, like an intestine shot, they seem to run five times further than a long shot with the 270. And I really wouldn't have guessed there would be that big a difference, but when we're ended up tracking them close to a kilometer, just to claim everything on that grind, a couple hundred meters here when we're not trying to be super efficient and when it doesn't feel like a waste of time to track him down, it's no big deal. I don't imagine there would have been a way to top the Melanistic Whitetail, other than maybe a super rare. That was pretty special, so no doubt whatever we shoot here would be a little bit below that, but we'll hit that guy. We actually got that heart shot in there. I'm not sure if the one that we were aiming at stayed around or if he spooked, but it's likely to be our last Whitetail hunt. We're getting pretty close to the end of Whitetail drink time. And even regardless, we've kind of accomplished what we were looking to do down in the south. We got everything unlocked except for this outpost, which I just went and did, and this lookout point. There may be an outpost or two around it, so we'll go and do that, but maybe we can stumble into some moose. There's a fair number of foxes and turkeys in that area too, so a bit of potential to see some stuff we haven't seen today other than the one fleeing fox that ran by us. And as for our buck, I mean... This one would have been a letdown from most prior harvests, just a 156 score in silver. Very non-curving main beams on that guy. And while that is neither of the species that I mentioned, a decent-ish black bear. Again, a tough shot. I can't even tell which way he's facing. I think he's facing away from us. We're just going to make hard shots, whether we try to or not. Apparently today with this gun, maybe we should bring it more often. Just about the last thing I would have expected with that shot, but it did. Just about the shoulder blade, through the left lung, and into the heart. 
20.01 scoring bear. Not too bad. That's kind of cool. As we're approaching the last outpost that we got to visit, we've got a strutting gobbler out here. Actually, now that I think of it, of course he's going to go back to resting. I wanted to get him before he could go back because I wanted to use the inspect screen. There we go. I don't know what the odds are that the other one would just stand up and do that, but that should allow us to get a good look at it. I'm not certain this is the right one since we shot both, but turkeys have already been kind of like increased in size in the harvest screens to get to see it better to begin with. Not that he's a high scoring one, but nice to get a, a closer look at the strutting animation. I can't tell what's going on there. I feel like the, I guess it's just the head going back into the feathers. That's pretty cool. Even, you know, in the trophy lodge, because when you place them on those platforms, you always get some of the grass in the way. You never get like a good clean look at it. I like that. We'll go and find the other, which hopefully didn't make it that far. In fact, he's laying just on the back side of this hill. And then we'll work our way over to the outpost. We've actually covered a lot of ground today. So unlocking our last outpost of the day, that'll be most of the map done. I think there's three lookouts and I would assume somewhere in the area of six outposts to go. And that can be for next time up there in the north, which is an area we haven't explored that much. So I think that'll be fun, but I would be shocked if in that hunt we can do as well as we did today. We do have a main lodge addition in what I believe is our biggest Mount Isaac Whitetail ever. Just to compare it, we shot this one on Rancho and Multiplayer. It did score 212. So that's quite the upgrade. I actually forget the score 224 from today. So an improvement of 12, that would be about right. And then that means we have a 225 albino and a 224 melanistic. I actually don't even know. April 13th of this year? I frankly don't remember shooting that, but regardless, a couple of very similar sized whitetail up there on the wall now. And again, just getting to see the new model as the melanistic live on its feet. That was the highlight of this hunt for me. Probably gonna be the highlight of hunting on New England for a while, but pretty cool. Good way to kind of get us going on this new map here in the live game. We had the pretty good run in early access, getting somewhere now here since the release. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.